makasabi mo sa katabi mo? Hello! <laughs> Alright, wow. Well, sa lahat ng mga nakatune in ngayon sa ating Facebook Live and sa ating YouTube and those listening sa radio, gusto kong malaman nyo that this is the day. The day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. Yes. You know why? Because victory is ours in the name of Jesus. Yes. We will rejoice because there is no conflict, no adversity, no problem, no struggle. There is nothing na magagawa ang kaaway to stop us from fulfilling, from fulfilling the plan of God. Amen. You know, the Lord, the Lord is coming soon. Very soon. Very soon. Of course, pag sinam natin coming soon, we're talking about yung actual pagbaba niya as king, as judge, to end all wickedness and to bring judgment sa mga ayaw sumunod sa kanya. God can end this world so that we can have a new beginning. Yung iba natatakot about the end, you know, you know, if you don't graduate from school, you will never begin a life as an adult in business or in whatever career. Laging may ending. The graduation of school is a beginning of an adult life. The ending of becoming a single means the beginning of a married life. So the Lord is going to end this world. Binigyan tayo ng chance choose Him, follow Him, at pag ginawa natin yun, we are going to not only eat the best of the land, but that shows that we are for heaven. If we choose not to follow Him, the greatest gift ng God is choice. If we don't choose to follow Him, even though God will knock at the door of your hearts, even though God will say, anak, that's the wrong way, choose life, Anak, I am the way. Anak, if you're struggling, come to me. I'll give you rest. Because He loves you. But if we choose not to follow God, and some talagang ayaw, because nadaya na sila ng, ng kaaway. The devil, the adversary, the accuser. You know, ang end nito is very, very sad. If you're listening to me, you don't have to go that way. You are God's special, lovely, beautiful child. He created you to succeed. You're created in the image of God. But you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. And we follow God. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. And so He's coming soon to end itong mga wickedness and injustices and corruption. But remember this, the end of this world is the beginning of a new world. God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Let's give the Lord a big clap. Up. So, that, that only shows you one thing. Brother, sister, kapatid, Hindi ka lang panlupa. You, you will not live and then die, period. No, 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 no. God's plan is eternal. Nung sinabi ng God, most quoted scriptures to many, especially among the young, di ba? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a great hope, not death. So, ibig ba sabihin nun, after 60 years or let's say 80 years and then you die, the plan of God stops? No. See, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the nations. Which means, kapatid, if you are today struggling with hopelessness, if you are, you know, feeling down, 
if you are afraid because of the pandemic or pandemic, if you're afraid of mortality because a lot of people are dying, some of our best friends or family members, someone we know is, has died because of COVID or other death, then you, are, you know that may mortality, you, you will not live forever on planet Earth. But the lie of the devil is telling you, hanggang dito ka lang, and there is no life after death. The greatest lie. Because what, li- what is life? Pinanganak ka, mag-aral ka, mag-asawa ka, magtrabaho ka, and then you die? Period? Sana kung mambago tayo mamatay, ang ganda ng buhay natin, but we go through struggles and pains and issues. Because all of those are testings to make you the best that you can be. So that at the end of your life, man, you're ready for whatever God has for you next. So, hindi ka lang panlupa. And if you're listening to me today on the radio, on the, your, 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 in your homes, in your mga iPhones, or whatever gadget you are, I want to tell you, you will live forever and ever and ever. You are not going to die and then that's it. You know, death in this world is something that we have to accept because death means a changing of our bodies. Death means transfer to another world. Because this world is not real, you know. This world is, is just, it, this is just an image of what God has for our next. If Jesus is alive today, where is He? He lives forever and ever in bliss, and sabi ng Bible, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. So Christ not here, so He's building a mansion where? In heaven. I'm building a house. In my Father's house are many mansions. Because if it were not true, I will tell you. But it's true, that's why I am going to prepare a place for you. And when it is finished, I will come again. Oh, that's the promise of the second coming. I will come again. To do what? Sa mga hindi nakakakilala kay Jesus or those who are, you know, tikas ng ulo, God is knocking at the door of your heart using problems and issues para you are awakened to say, if I go this road of last alak, babae, sugal, lalaki, kalokohan, corruption, I will be makamahuli ako and I might go to jail and my family is lost. So, problems are God's way to knock at the door of your heart. So, if you don't follow God, you'll go the road of judgment. But, if you're walking with God, sabi ng God, I will come to take you. God's coming for you and for me. Where? To the place that He is preparing for us. So that place is more real to me now. Why? Because, I mean, you see a lot of people getting old and then you look at them parang, you know, parang, you know, if they're old, they're only in the house, their eyes are almost blind, they cannot make movements, they cannot eat, and then they are daming gamot, daming struggle. Sometimes you realize, you know, it would be good for him or her to end the suffering. Pero kung wala kang hope of eternal life, where will you go? So this is why the church of Jesus Christ, the word of God is so powerful because hindi lang tayo binibigyan ng assurance of victory today sa mga pinagdadaanan mo. I want to talk about that. But when you face the problems and the conflicts and struggles of life, and face it, because God will never leave you anyway, you'll see that in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the problems, God is opening a door. So that when you enter that door, you'll say, wow, man, this is far better than what's out there. And I tell you, that's why I feel today that if you're watching, kayo mga naririto, I want you to connect into your minds. Hindi ending natin is when we die and go to the grave, no. If you are a child of God, your ending, that death is sleep, and then when you wake up, 
you're in the kingdom of God, in the heaven of God, in the new place. You know, if, if you go to church and just go Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, wala kang hope of eternal life. Parang kulang, parang bitin. You know? But we're coming to church, we're worshiping God kasi alam natin that the Christ that loves us came to save us from all the misery, all the sin, all the you know, disobedience natin na magdadala sa atin to hell. He came so that He say, I don't want you to go to hell. That's why I died at the cross. If you believe in me, hell has no power over you. I will now bring you to my eternal kingdom. So I come to church. I read my Bible because I have hope. I have a great hope that there is a resurrection. Woo! There is a new beginning. And you know, if you have problems today, you know, don't give up. You know, just fight for what is right. Wag kang gumawa ng kasalanan. Because anyway, 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 it's making you better sa problema. Trusting God, praying to God. Anyway, after all of these pains and suffering, in fact, one, the world is basically a place, not a good place to live, hindi ba? I mean, lumilipat ka ng bahay from an era, laging may away, may chismisan, you know, may nakawan, or sometimes in your own home, dami chismis, but you want to go out of that and maybe live in the country or somewhere na may peace, right? So this, the world is coming, kapatid, to, 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 for those listening and watching, the world is coming to an end. Now, I am not happy for those who will not be saved but before that that's why I'm preaching I'm telling you bro ate nai there is a better life ahead of you hindi ka kinakailangan maglaseng hindi ka kinakailangan magkaway galit hindi ka rin kinakailangan magwala at mag tiktok na lang dahil wala kang magawa hindi naman kinakailangan you know you put down your guard and say ah kesera sira bahala no 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 Look, I'm talking to you. I see you in my heart, in my spirit. I see you. Maybe may struggle. Ka. I'm telling you, kapatid, you don't, you don't have to go that road. That road leads to destruction. Sabi ni Christ, I am the way. And if you follow the way of God, you will experience eternal life with Him forever in paradise. So before we continue the service, gusto ko lang to pray for you right now. Maybe, maybe God wants you to listen to this. Or maybe you've been coming to church, pero you know, you're, you're, you have not taken hold of the hope of eternal life. Or maybe you have planned to just watch, check it out, and then go on your own way. Maybe, maybe God is arresting you today. You're listening today. You have a short time, but I want you to know this. Jesus loves you so much. And He died at the cross for you. Hindi siya namatay para lang sa Kanya. He died for you. Why you? Because you have a life eternal na gusto ng Lord makasama ka in His forever. Your choice. But I want to pray if God may makatokan Lord sa puso mo today. Or maybe you're a Christian and you know, you're having issues, asawa, anak, problema, or you're tempted to just magwala ka na, or, or, or maybe, you know, the addiction ng alak o ng sugal o ng ambitious there. 
and you're struggling and you're saying, God, hindi ko ito makakaya, Lord, tsaka parang wala naman mangyayari. Let me tell you this. This is the day. This is your day. And you can trust God because He will give you a life of rejoicing. After you accept Him, you will see God will open the door. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Because God is the way. Amen? I want to pray for you right now. I want you to reach up your hands. Lahat ng mga nanonood, nakikinig. If God is knocking at the door, you are, if you think there is more to life than this, or meron kang family members that, you know, is struggling, you know, or, or, or you know, you're saying, God, thank you for this life, dal Christian ka, but Lord, there is a life eternal. Lord, we can never imagine how good and how great that is. And we want to prepare our hearts for that kingdom. So today, if you're a Christian, you want to recommit your life to God, this is the day. If you are not a Christian, 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 no ka lang, that today you want to just really have that hope, yung pag-asa na ano man ang mangyari, God will be with you. I'm praying for you right now. Here we go. Takilang Dios, habang nakataas ang kanilang mga kamay, Lord, dalangin ko sa pangalan ni Kristo Jesus na namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo pero nabuhay na maguli para patutuhanan ang pangako niya ay totoo at ang kasalanan ay binihag na niya ang demonyo ay natalo na sa krus ng Kalbaryo Today, Lord, lahat ng mga kapatid ko nakataas ang kamay at may iyak sa kanilang mga puso Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Lord, pumasok ka sa kanilang mga puso at Lord, baguhin mo sila Lord, dalangin ko ipakita mo sa kanila na you are more powerful than the darkness that what the enemy meant for evil, you meant it for good. So today I pray, Lord, touch the heart of this, my brother, my sister, my ate, my kuya, my kapatid, my friend, in Jesus' name. I want you to open your heart right now and say, say with me, Lord, come into my life. Come into my world. Rule me. I want to live forever in your eternal glory. Thank you, Jesus, for dying at the cross. Amen. Amen. Let's give it a little bit. Wow. Come on, let's go. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, lahat po nang nanonood, nakikinig, I want you to right now share nyo. You know, tell your friends, watch. We have not started the message. Number two, that's message number one. But I want you to text your friend right now and say, listen to this this live broadcast. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Let's give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Kanina sa ating pre-service, ang ating mga hosts sa ating pre-service or yung atatawag nating uh, Media Trenta, they were on air and they're talking about uh, yung ating pinag-usapan last week and we're talking about conflicts or adversity or struggle or problem na hinaharap natin. Alright? But before that, I was being asked today, lahat ng mga nakikinig sa DYSP, welcome po to Life Church, the home of the champions. I'm your pastor, Pastor Ancho. O hindi nyo po po alam, alam na po nyo, I'm your pastor and I love you and welcome sa lahat ng DYSP. We're on air. Please, kung meron po kayong uh, gustong itanong or you're being touched or nahihipo kayo, whatever it is, please text us at 0927-8034-359 sa DYSP 909 AM. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a big clap. Come on. Come on, everybody. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Woo! All right. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, before I go on, we are also live FM. Tayo po ay live FM sa DWIC 94.3. We're on air right now. We love you. Ako po si Pastor Ancho. And uh, I'm your pastor. I, I love you and I want you to grow in Jesus. Hit the target that God has for you. And we want to be part of your life. Please, kung meron kayong mga tanong or you want to be able to connect with us, please text us at 0917-861-0805. Right? God bless you. We love you. Are you ready for the word of God today? Come on. Are you ready for the word of God? All right. We are talking about the book of Acts. And we are now on chapter 6, 7, and 8. We're going to go tatlo po ang ating uh, uh, chapter na dadaanan. And uh, because uh, this chapter is, is very powerful. 
All right, but let me give you the background. All right, so chapter 6, a conflict arise. May nagkaroon sila ng problema and it's a good problem because napakadaming taong nakakakilala kay Lord at maraming mga taong nangangailangan and the church was growing in chapter 6. The church was growing, phenomenal growth. You know, uh, thousands upon thousands of people are coming. Hindi lang kilala but disciple. Pagsabi sa, uh, sa verse 6, sabi sa verse 6 ng, uh, uh, sa verse 1 ng chapter 6, ang sabi dito sa, sa Bible, Nang panahon na iyon, habang dumadami ang mga disciples, nagkaroon ng conflict, nagkaroon ng problema, nagkaroon ng need. Ang nangyari, sa dami ng taong dumadating at madami mga pangangailangan, they started not only to preach the Word of God, but they started to help them in their financial needs sa kanila mga pangangailangan personal. At during this time, they were giving uh, ayuda. Alright, ayuda. Because prior to that, remember, one chapter before that, si Barnabas, ang pangalan niya, the son of encouragement, basta ramdam niya yung pagmamahal ng Lord, nag-overflow sa kanya, he sold a property and gave it to the apostles. And this is why they were able to bless. Uh, you know, generosity, when we are honoring God, when we give the money we give, are helping a lot of people, now start ng ministry. And so dumadami yung mga tao, tapos nagkaroon ng problema yung Hellenistic Jew, at saka yung mga yung mga Hebrew Jew. So to solve the problem, and that was a good problem, to solve the problem, sabi, na, sabi ng mga, mga apostles, let's choose seven men. The problem created the solution. Siyempre, there was a problem, ito yung solution. Choose seven men, sabi nila, who will deal with these problems? At yung mga apostles, they will continue what yung calling nila to pray so that you're connect to God. If you don't pray, wala kang connect to God. If you don't pray, wala kang connect kay God at wala ring God for you to connect, to guide you. Alright? So they prayed, sabi ng Bible, and they spent time in the study of the Word of God because this is God's message for our success, for our redemption. And so the Bible says, lalo silang lumago. But I want you to take note that this conflict, this problem, created a lot of opportunities. Ano yung mga points natin? I'll just go straight para mabilis po. I said you last week that conflict will always invite, a growth will always invite conflict. Habang lumalago ka, hindi ka na pwedeng mamuhay sa dati, new opportunities will come. Growth always invites conflict. Pinag-usapan natin, conflicts makes you aware of your surrounding. You're like, oy, malaki pala yung mundong ginagalawan ko. Ay, mayroon pa palang need. All right? Conflict introduces you to you. You begin to realize, dati sabi mo, hindi ko alam ito, hindi ko alam kung gagawin ko. Then you realize when the problem came to you, you realize that inside of you, marami kang ideas, marami ka palang galing. Katulad sa inyo, hindi ko alam, kayo pala ay mga agriculturist. Kayo pala ay mga chef. Kung nawalan kayo ng trabaho, grabe, nagkaroon kayo ng business. Halaman. Mais. Nagtinda kayo. At mas marami ang kita nyo. Hallelujah. Marunong pala kayo. Yung inyong bahay na parang uh, uh, parang bahagi ng impyerno kasi ang gulo, ang dumi, yung inyong bakuran. Ngayon, nagtanim ka na. Praise God. Yung tuwing umaga, meron kang okra. Tung umaga, meron kang mga vegetables. And then you realize, wow, okay pala to. Ah. So you have you have opportunities. Conflicts introduces you to you. Conflict produces solutions. Meaning, a new level. Conflicts, you begin to realize, are your strength. Kasi conflicts are our merienda. Numbers 14 says, okay matakot sa mga kaaway because they will be just lunch for you. Sabi ng Bible yun in Numbers 14 verse 9. God was telling, don't be afraid. Lahat ng problema are meant to make you strong. Goliath, made at King David. The lion made a Daniel. The cross made the resurrection possible. Any problem you have, laging meron yang good side. And then, not only that, but conflicts invites you or invites God's intervention sa buhay mo. Oh, I tell you, mas gusto ko laging nag intervene ng God. Bakit? Kasi nag intervene God. Kasi ay nag intervene yung attorney, yung sheriff, 
yung pulis, hinahanap ka, nag i sa kalokohan mo. But when God intervenes because you have a problem, or when God comes to you, He helps you. He is a paraclete. He is a comforter. So if you are a child of God, when there is a problem, huwag kang mataranta. Alam nyo ba that one, one fifth of the young people today worldwide are depressed and suicidal? Ibig sabihin, one, 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 uh, bao, isa sa lima ay depressed, uh, ay, 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 you know, feeling isolated, feeling lost, and some of them are suicidal kasi eh, kutataman, ang buong buhay mo, Facebook, ang buong buhay mo, gimmick, ang buong buhay mo, labas, wala ka ng labas, you feel depressed. Which, halimbawa, kaya ginawa ng Lord, para makapag-isip ka sa sarili mo. At matigyan mo naman yung kapatid mo na nangangailangan ng time. And some people do that. Alright? But, ako ang prayer ko that God intervenes. Pero lastly, conflict gives birth to personality. Conflict gives birth to personality. Let me tell you this. Ano ang nangyari noong nagkaroon ng conflict? Seven men were chosen. Seven men were chosen. Alright? And among the seven men, they did great, but two became very outstanding. Si Stephen, si Philip, and the death of Stephen produced another one. The actual death, yung martyrdom ni Stephen made a soul, the Pharisee, saw what happened to kay, kay Stephen, and his mind was forever ek with, anong meron itong Stephen? Because in the book of, in, 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 in the book of Acts, and I want you to see this, sabi ng Bible, Acts chapter 8, Alright? Si Segway ko lang para hindi natin mabalikan. Sabi dito, nung, nung namamatay, nung pina, binabato nila si Stephen because of the boldness and the wisdom at saka yung angelic look ni Stephen. And he was not afraid to die kasi may eternal life nga eh. Takot ka lang mamatay kung wala kang eternal life. Pero kung alam mong eternal life pero pang impyerno ka, dapat matakot ka. Pero why, why be afraid? Eh, God is a purpose. You know that, sabi ng Bible, sa last verse ng chapter 7, Ha? Sum, sum, lumuhod pa nga si ano, lumuhod pa si si Stephen at sabi niya Panginoon, patawarin mo po ang mga taong ito. Verse 8 says, nagbigay ng approval chapter 8 verse 1, nagbigay ng approval si Saul sa pagpatay ni Stephen. So naroon si Saul, siya yung nag-approve. Remember, kumuha siya ng 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 meron siyang uh, permit to harass the, the Jews were angry at the Follower of the way. Kasi sila yung pumatay kay Christ. Si Christ pumunta para sa Israel, but Israel rejected him. That's why yun ang preaching ng mga apostol. So they, they decided to kill uh, uh, Stephen, but that was approved by, by Saul. Kaya lang, ang hindi mawala sa isip ni Saul, and he was, I think that was the, the turning point ni Saul nung nakita niya, Itong mga pinapatay ko, grabe, hindi natatakot. Hinaharap ang kamatayan. And they were boldly saying, may resurrection. May promise ang, ang ating mga ama, sa, ang ama natin, si Abraham, Isaac, at Jacob. Sinabi yan kay Moses, sinabi yan kay David. May plano ang God sa inyo. Huwag niyong patayin. Hindi, hindi mo wala sa isip ni Saul yun. Because at chapter 9, he get saved. Get saved. Chapter 9, he got saved. So tatlong personality became prominent because of the conflict. Stephen, and then si Philip, the whole of chapter 8, si Philip was the prominent person. Chapter 9, si, ano na, si, si Saul na became the Apostle Paul. So conflict, listen to me, conflict gives birth to personality. Give birth to someone. At nabanggit ko last time, during the problema ng, ng racial discrimination sa America, may isang babae, si Rosa Park. He, di, naman, wala, di naman siya nag accept na maging mag, magaling siya. He just decided... Sobra na itong ginagawa niyong racial discrimination. So he sat down nung pinaalis siya sa, sa, sa bus, hindi siya umalis. But that started, that spark a Montgomery uh, appraisal na nag birth to a Martin Luther King. That gave birth to the freedom of slavery. Hallelujah. Amen? So, alam niyo ba, yung, yung, yung uh, Bolshevik Revolution, in, in 1917, you know, gave, gave rise. It's a, it's a big problem, but it gave rise to a Lenin and a Stalin. Yung problema sa Germany, yung kanilang feeling na, you know, they are the super race, created a Hitler. Not, not good, but personality will always bring about 
a, a, a problem may always bring about a personality, both good and bad. All right? And I have said before, during the time ng problema natin sa Pilipinas, during the time of the revolution uh, ng EDSA, you know, uh, produces a Cory Aquino. Good or bad. Itong corruption na nangyari sa Pilipinas, sobra ng kung anong problema natin, mahina produces a Duterte. Today, the pandemic, what happening will produce someone. And we're praying to God, praying to God that God will bring someone that can, can bring about pagbabago sa ating bayan. Or maybe sa buhay mo may pagbabago. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Uh, pain is not evil. Problem is not evil. Ang problema, yung, yung inability natin at unwillingness natin to see the reason of the pain. Kasi may, may reason palagi eh. Hello? Sabi ng isang great man, si Charles Kingley, he's a, uh, a writer, he's a powerful man of God. Sabi niya, pain is not evil unless it conquers you. So conflict and problem is not a problem. Remember, the problem is the first name, ang kanyang apelido, solution. So I'm thanking God, kasi what I see here, kapatid, and I'm going to develop what I see here, the persecution, okay, the conflict that led to the death po ni Stephen, Nag-dis, nag naglead ito na yung mga Christian Jew, yung mga tumanggap kay Kristo, they were scattered. They were forced to leave Jerusalem because they will be killed. Pero you know what happened? The beautiful thing happened. Nung sila'y nag-alisan, kung saan sila nagpunta, dala nila yung faith nila. So kung saan sila mapunta, they now talk about Jesus. Lalong lumagana pang gospel. But remember, I think this is the plan of God. Kasi sabi ng God, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the other parts of part of the earth. I think the Jewish people were concentrated lang, the, the first Christian, puro mga Jew ang first Christian eh. They just want to stay in Jerusalem. Comfort zone nila yun. Sino sa inyo, because of some problems, you have to go somewhere, do something na hindi mo gusto, but you realize pagpunta mo ron, doon kayo maman. Doon muna kita yung better life or better half. Kung nandiyan ka lang, because God wants us to go into all the world. So when they were scattered, tingnan nyo, when they were scattered, that led them to go into all the world. That's what happened to Stephen. Si, si Paul brought the gospel to the Gentile world. Si Philip at chapter 8 brought the gospel to Samaria. From then, Ethiopia, and then it spread. Because sometimes, baka kaya ka may problema because what God is saying to you, ang tagal-tagal mo na dito, move. O kaya ito, marami na kayo dito, move. And we bear, we bear the life of Christ inside of us. Yung iba sa inyo, kung di kayo tagapalawan, inassign kayo dito, di ba? Ayaw mo nung una, Palawan, wala akong kilala ron. Ngayon, ayaw mo nung umalis sa Palawan. From blessed to blessed ka na sa Palawan. Maganda pala Palawan. So either God is forcing us to move and causing problems. Okay, you have to look at the problem. Why is this happening? Maybe God is telling you, time to move. Or, to maganda. Huwag mo nang hintayin ang problema. Just keep obeying the Lord. Come on, come on. Amen. Kasi pag inavoid mo ang problems or struggles or pain, delikado yun. Ang tawag dyan, spiritual leprosy. Let me tell you a story. I was, I was reading this and I was so, sh- I was so blessed. Okay? May, may libro uh, written by Dr. Paul Brandt. Alright? Uh, co-author niya si Philip Yancey, a great, great man. He tells the story of isang four-year-old na bata ang pangalan si Tanya. Si Tanya, bi, uh, dinala ng nanay niya sa kay Dr. Brand kasi yung bata nasyak yung nanay 4 years old si Tanya 4, four years old si Tanya nung pinuntahan ng nanay sa crib aba ang daming drawing doon sa sa sa, sa crib 
ng, ng pula. Sabi niya, wala naman akong binigay sa kanyang color or pentel or whatever. Narealize niya, nagdudugo yung kamay ni, ni Tanya. Ha? At yun ang ginagamit niyang pansulat. Napasigaw yung nanay. Ah! Biglang, nabigla yung bata. Ngimiti, nakita niya puro dugo yung kanyang ipin. So, na-shock na na siya. Doon din nalang niya sa ospital. Tinignan nga nito ni Dr. Brand. Sabi niya, si Tanya, habang ginagamot at inaayos, wala siyang feeling. In fact, may joke, may konting ano yung paa niya. Nung, nung inaayos ng doktor, wala man lang feeling si Tanya. So, sabi niya lang, what happened here? Ano, anong problema? So, chinect nila. So, sabi nung, sabi nung doktor, ano, yan ay tinatawag niya, congenital indifference to pain. I think that's leprosy. Whatever it is. Seven years later, si Tanya, nabalitaan ni doktor, na putol na yung dalawang kamay, putol yung paa, at saka yung kanyang dila, kinagat niya, kasi wala siya nararamdaman pain eh. Wala siya nararamdaman pain. Yung tatay, ito malungkot yung tatay, hiniwalayan yung asawa dahil ang tawag niya kay Tanya, you're a monster. Takot siya. But the child was not a monster. Meron lang siyang sakit. You know, yung, yung tinatawag nating uh, uh, life without pain is a human metaphor of what we call leprosy. Leprosy. Si Dr. Brand Nakita niya yung problema. Well, many years after, si Dr. Brand nagpunta sa ibang bansa at pabalik niya, nasa aeroplano siya. Pagod na pagod yung paa niya. Pagitin niya sa hotel, ini-stress niya yung paa niya. Parang nararamdaman niya, walang, walang pakiramdam. Muha siya ng aspili, tinusok niya. Walang pakiramdam. Naku, natakot siya. Naku, baka meron akong ganung sakit. And he started to pray. Dami niyang inisip. The next morning, pagising niya, tinignan niya ulit. Kinuha niya yung aspili. Tinusok niya. Ouch! Sabi niya. Masakit! Alam mo, mayamiya, sabi niya, Lord, thank you for the pain. Alam niyo ba, pag ikaw ay laging tumatakbo sa mga pagsubok, mga challenges of life, wala kang mararating. Because pain, conflicts, and problems are not problems. These are always opportunity. Kaya when I look at the Bible, reading chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, sabi ko, God, grabe ka. Iinalaw mo yung, yung problema. Nag-start lang sa problema ng pagbibigay ng ayuda. That led to them choosing seven men that will take care of the problem. Nakilala yung seven. The seven became great leaders, especially si Stephen, which, by the way, was the first person that died. Pero yung death niya, in-embrace niya happily, that created to a, another man coming up, that's Paul. And then Philip, as I said kanina. And then, the movement started to explode. The movement started to explode. Crap, let's give the Lord a big club offering. ignite yung heart ng mga tao to now embrace yung plan ng God that the good news of salvation to the nation and the fighting, the wars, the pestilences, the immorality, the corruption ay masosolve lang with the gospel of Christ. And so they went out to the world. Grabe, the movement move on and move on. Tama yung Bible. Ano? Tama yung sinasabi ng mga great leaders. The blood of the martyrs is yeah, the, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. When Christ died, naliktas tayo. So when you are bleeding, marami kang struggles. Maybe, maybe tatay ka. Maybe feeling mo, pag titinan mo yung asawa mo, tsaka anak mo, nahihirapan. You know, pero you, 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 you fight. Ang ginawa mo, nag-double job ka. Talagang halos di ka makapahinga. Halos parang nagdurugo ang damdahin mo. Pero pinaglalaban mo. And then you now look forward. And say, or you look backward and say, you know, ga ang hirap na hirap ako. Pero look at my sons today. Look at my mga anak ko today. Remain intact kami. Anak ko nakatapos na ng pag-aral. Hindi nila alam kung gano'ng kahirap. 
but you you took you took the hardship the hard work inaalipusta ka ng iba you bleed you 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 were crying yung mga OFW na you missed your family you're abroad and you're crying every day para lang magbigyan ng magandang kinabukasan sa anak mo you miss them so much pagka christmas and, and, and you know and, and you do a lot for them and i tell you when when maharap tayo ng mga problema and i want to tell you this kasi ayoko ang mga christians pa bebe ayoko mga christians takbuhin our Master is a conqueror of death. He conquered death. Our master faced all the oppositions of life. Our master, Jesus, faced the devil face to face. Tinempt siya. If you are the son of God, make this stone to become bread. If you are the son of God. The temptation is very easy para hindi siya dumaan sa cross. But sabi niya, no. The word of God says, and he went to the garden of Gethsemane. Look at ang, ang ating Lord. Naroon siya, nakaluhod siya. Yung sobrang intense ng kanyang purpose to accomplish God. Plan. Yung nakita niyang salvation of humanity was so strong, pero alam din niya, the, re, the, the only way, the only way mangyayari to if he pay the price. Ano yun? Iinumin niya ang cup of all the sin of humanity. And then, alam niya that for the first time between the Father and the Son, God the Father will not look at Him on the cross. Kaya sabi niya, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He had never felt abandoned. But at that time, God was looking at Him because at that moment, Jesus was paying the price of all the sin, the corruption, the wickedness. But he needs to face. But look, yung intensity noon. Sabi ng Bible, yung kanyang, yung kanyang, yung kanyang pawis turn into blood. That's how intense. Pero you know what? Hindi siya na give up. He chose to do what is right. He chose to fight. Death sa kanyang muka. And now we rejoice, nagpapasalamat tayo, that our Savior died for us so that we can have an eternal life. <laughs> Hallelujah! Let's give the Lord a big clap. Come on! Let's give the Lord a big clap. I've been reading all the accounts of the suffering of, of many people and I, I was teaching about the, the suffering of the Jew. And one day, I come across uh, isang, isang article that was very shocking to me. Sabi nung isang nag, na pinipersecute sa Russia, sabi niya, ano ang outcome sa ginagawa ng mga persecution sa inyo? Jew, anong nagiging outcome once they, they started to harass and persecute you? Ito sabi ng Jew, I was very happy. Sabi niya dito, Let me read the account para maganda. The persecutor of the Jews in Russia asked a Jewish man what he thought the outcome would be if the wave of persecution continue. Sabi ng Jew ito, the result of all the persecutions will be a feast, fiesta. Why? Sabi niya, Pharaoh tried to destroy the Jew, but the result was the feast of Passover. Haman, during the time of Esther, attempted to destroy the Jew. The result was the feast of Purim. Purim is a time where they celebrate dahil si, si Haman wanted the king to destroy all the Jew. Buti na lang si Esther nagsabi, pray for me, if I perish, I perish. Pero sasabihin ko sa, sa king that I am a Jew. Ang nangyari, naligtas ang mga Jew during that day, ang ginagawa niya, they celebrate the Purim. Ano yun? Meron silang parade. Every year, may parade sila. Sin, hanggang ngayon, and then they have costumes and they have happiness. Now, si Antiochus Epiphanes, during the 173 AD, he binent niya, this is a type of the anti, binent niya yung kanyang 
persecution sa mga Jew. In fact, one of the stories is shocking. See, during that time, the, uh, si Antiochus the third, the fourth, con- the Greek conquered Israel, pero they allow every country na na-conquer nila to do their religious festivals. Okay lang. Pero itong si Antiochus, 33, 30, up, 30 years after, nung siya na yung naging king, you know, he ventilated yung kanyang pain, ang kanyang sama ng loob, ang kanyang hatred sa Jew. Alam mo itong ginawa niya. Just to give you an example. Ulang na pinagbawal niya, wala nang piyesta, walang circumcision, walang sabat, wala na kayong sacrifice sa temple. Naglagay siya ng Diyos, Diyos doon sa temple. Tapos, wala, nang, wala na kayong gagawin as a Jew. Gusto niyang wasakin at destroy the Jewish people with God's people. Anong ginawa nung isang, isang nanay? Sinircumcised niya yung kanyang kambal na anak na tinuli niya. Alam, 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 alam niyang bawal, pero nung nalaman ni Antiochus, alam mo kung anong ginawa niya? Para malaman. Kinuha niya yung bata, yung dalawang batang, uh, normally, pagka, if you're a Jew, eight years old, you circumcise your anak. Sign of the covenant ni Abraham. Kinuha niya yung dalawang bata na eight, eight days old, not eight years, eight days old. Kinalawit niya sinampay niya sa ulo ng nanay. Patay yung bata at pinaglakad siya sa plaza bilang tanda na huwag kayong susuway sa utos ko. And then he was thrown and died. At one time, pitong magkakapatid, ang sabi niya, ano po ba makukuha niyo if you are trying to destroy our religion? Sabi niya kay Antiochus, ang gilama nung itong leader na to, pinutol yung dila ng bata. Pinuto lang dalawang kamay, dalawang paa, nag, nag, nag-init sa kawali, nilagay lahat yun. Tapos kumuha ng malaking, malaking, malaking kawan at tinapon yung silang pitong magkakapatid, pati yung nanay. Killed. That's how, how painful it is. Pero alam mo, sabi niya, Pharaoh tried to destroy the Jew, there was the feast of Passover. Haman attempted to destroy the Jew, the result was feast of Purim. Antiochus a people try to destroy the Jew, but the result was the feast of thanksgiving. Yung tinatawag nating the festival of light o yung Hanukkah. Pag nakakakita kayo ng kandilabra na may walo tsaka isa dito. During that time, ng panahon na yun, just to give you the story of this persecution, yung pare, sino, yung, yung kaibigan, kalala ni Antiochus, sinuhulan si Antiochus para siya maging high priest sa, sa Israel. Para ma- maloko niya. Alright? Tapos, may another naman na nag-bribe sa kanya para siyang maging high priest. Para, parang control niya yung lahat ng mga Jew. But at that time, nagalit na si Antioco. Sabi hindi, lahat na yun, papatayin. Patay na kayo. Meron isang tao, ang pangalan niya, si Matthias. He's an elderly, elderly Jew. Sabi niya, no, that's enough. Sabi niya, we will no longer obey itong sinasabi nitong si Antiochus Epiphanes. Si Matthias, you know, nung papunta yung mga sundalo para i-implement yung rule, pinatay niya yung sundalo. Sabi niya, hindi na kami papayag na wasakin at lokohin nyo at uh, bastusin ang pag-aalay. Pagkatapos nun, yung mga ibang mga Jew, nag-alsa sila, which is what we call the Maccabees Revolt. Yung kanyang anak, si Matanda na si Matthias, si Judah was known the Maccabees or the Hamer, Siya yung nag ng revolution. And they started to, to, to uh, camp around. And then, after two years, namatay si Epiphanes. So they went back. They went back to sa temple para linisin ang temple. Kasi this is very important, the cleansing of the temple because God will not come to a temple that's not clean. So they went to the temple. Ang unang ginawa nila, naghanap sila ng oil. Nakakita sila ng oil at nilagay niya yung candelabra, yung, yung menorah ng isang oil, ng isang light. Ang prayer nila, kinakailangan kasi walo yun. Wala silang makita. Nag-pray sila. Alam mo yung isang oil na supposed to be one day, na natili hanggang eight day. Hanggang malinis nila yung temple. Kaya every day today, every day, during the piesta ng menorah, makakakita ka ng kandilabra sa mga pintu, a bintana ng mga Jew because they're celebrating, they're giving thanks to God na yung liwanag ng Diyos ay bumabalik. So what am I saying? What am I saying? Tandaan nyo to ha. Anytime na merong conflict or problems or struggles na dinadaanan ka, huwag kang matakot. Bagkus, you look to God and say, God, 
hindi ka naman papayag na dumadaan ako sa problema nang walang dahilan. Hindi ba maliwanag ang Bible? There is no temptation, but such as is common to man. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And with the temptation, sabi ng Bible, God will always make a way of escape. So itong pakinggan po niyo ako, kayong mga nanonood at nakikinig at kayong mga narito. There is nothing, there is no one, nothing can separate us from the love of God. O yung kantang, there is no problem too big that God cannot solve. Anything na dumadaan sa atin. So when I look at the book of Acts, I see some problems, I see some persecutions, pero ang result palagi nito, if you remain faithful to God, you know, I love you kapatid, that's why I'm talking like this, and I love you kayo mga naririto. You know, wag kang tumakbo sa problema, especially kung yung problema ng yan, pagkagagawan mo, then change your ways. Pero yung may ginagawa kang tama, may persecution, then say, God, what is the plan? Kaya tandaan mo, kinakanta ka natin, hindi ba? What the enemy meant for evil. Tama mo si Joseph, you know, yung panaginip niya, may plan ng God, pero kinuha ng mga kapatid, binenta, naging alalay, napagkama lang ng rape, nakulong, pinangakuan sa bilangguan, natutulungan kita after marami siyang tulong, nakalimutan. Pero 13 years after, <laughs> kaya pala pinadala ng Panginoon si Joseph sa Egypt because magkakaroon ng famine sa buong bansa. Egypt lang ang magkakaroon ng blessing. E at that time, nung nanaginip ang Pharaoh at inexpress, in, pina, pina, pinaliwanag ni, ni uh, Joseph yung dream kay Pharaoh at sabi ni Pharaoh, wow, sino pa ang dapat kong gawing leader? Kasi sabi ni, ni Joseph, ito po ang mangyayari. Pitong taong pitong taong sagana at pitong taong kahirapan. Kaya ito pong gawin nyo, kumupo kayo ng isang leader na mag ng mga bigas at grain para sabi nung, ito yun ang suggestion ni Joseph, sabi nung, pero, eh sino pa mas magaling dito kundi ikaw? Siya kinuha. So from the prison, or from the pit, tinapon siya sa hukay, to the prison, to the palace. In 13 years, he saved his family of 70, kanyang tatay, kanyang mga kapatid, dinala doon sa Egypt that made them survive. So look at me. Kung puro ka panaginip, praise God. Pero pastor, ang dami kong panaginip para walang nangyayari. Praise God. Siguro nasa pit ka ngayon. Hindi puwet, pit. Hindi rin pa, pit nasa hukay ka. Parang wala kang pag-asa. Parang kamataya mo na. Keep trusting the Lord. O pastor, praise God. Kaya lang pastor, napagbintangan akong ganito. Don't worry, nasa prison ka. Hallelujah. But keep believing kasi, alam mo, ang taong mga nanag- nananaginip, may nangyayari. Kaya lang iba, takot managinip. Kaya, <laughs> kaya ganyan pa rin ang buhay mo kasi wala ka ng panaginip. Dream, kapatid. Especially dream, the dream of God for you. Look at me. Sabi ng Bible, for I know the plans I have for you. Tama? Eh kung may plano na ng Diyos, eh ba't anong, ano ba pinaplano mo? Huwag ka lang gumawa na sarili mong plano. Kasi yung sarili mong plano, for the Lord yan, for the Lord. Pero hindi yan, from the Lord. Kaya lang hirap mag-transition to, I trust God to, all my life, I am very selfish. Puro sarili mo eh. Gusto mo. Ha? Nasusunod. Kaya ka puro palpak. Why don't you right now say, Lord, I trust you. Nakakatakot ang magtiwala kay Lord. Bakit hindi ka sanay? <laughs> Pero pag nasanay ka, ang sarap magtiwala kay Lord dahil lagi kang inilalabas sa dilim papunta ng liwanan. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Woo! Hallelujah! Come on! Hallelujah! So there are a lot of things I want to tell you right now. Ay, just ko. Bite-bite ng Lord talaga, no? Here are a few things I want you to think. Pakis, ano mo, habulin nyo to sa, sa media natin. Number one, the longer you avoid a problem, the bigger the problem becomes. Habang pinatatagal mong solusyonan yung problema yan, lalong lumalaki yung problema. Kaya merong, 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 di ba, merong story yung uh, 
uh, the elephant in the house or the dragon in the house. Ang isang problema pag hindi mo sinol, maliit lang yan, maliit na dragon lang yan. Habang hindi mo binabangasin, dumalaki yung dragon. Hindi pa nangasin, napakalaki na yung dragon, gipit na gipit ka na sa buhay. Samantalang ang dapat mo lang ginawa, nung may problema, sinol mo kagad. So the longer you avoid, we avoid problems or issues or struggles or conflicts in life, the problem becomes bigger. Do solve it now. Number two, always remember, pain is part of progress. Pain is part of progress. Yung binanggit ko, growth will always invite conflict. Unless, of course, ayaw mo mag-grow. <laughs> Eh di yung size 4 na sapatos mong gustong gusto mo na binigay ng iyong pinsan galing pa sa United States of Japan. Ang mahal. Ha? Kaya lang, noon yung 7 years old ka, bro, 17 ka na, hindi mo pwedeng isuot yun. Uh, this is a pure true story of me. Ha? Yung tatay ko, sinama ng aking ng magul, mga parents ng aking sister, Pumunta sila sa Hong Kong. During that time, pag nagpunta ka ng Hong Kong, may big shot ka no, during that time. Alright? I was, I, was, I was just, I was in high school. I think I, hindi ko alam kung high school ako, grade 6, grade 6 ako. Pagdating ng tatay ko from Hong Kong, grabe nilag, nilagaluhan ako ng Adidas na kulay blue, yung may original tatlong stripe. Alright? Eh, hindi naman kami mayaman. Eh, yung klasiko sa FEU, pero kita ko yung mga ganda na mga sapatos naman, si Bagos, Ako puro si Luma. <laughs> Pero nung binigyan ako, <laughs> alam niyo si Bago kasi, it's a, it's a power, it's a beautiful, expensive shoes. Ako meron ako nga dito, ako lagi kong suot yun. Huh? Three years after, sinusuot ko pa. Kaya ito problema, yung daliri ko dati nung unang bilig, ganyan. Nung tumatagal, nakagano na yung daliri ko. Pero, bro, man, Adidas to pare, man. Galing pa sa original ito, hindi ito baklaran. Dati baklaran ang bili yan eh. Pare. Kaya lang, pag naglalakad ako, parang nahihirapan ako. Pagating ko sa bahay namin, pagbukas ko ng, pagbukas ko, tanggal ko sa sapato, sabi, oh, parang langit at impyerno. Pag suot ko, impyerno. Pag tanggal ko, langit. But listen to me. May, maybe it's yung thinking mo, your box in your thinking. Maybe yung problema na yun, tagal-tagal na. Maybe may paglago na, kaya lang ayaw mong tanggapin ang paglago. Remember, pain, facing the problem, doing something different, pain, nakita niyo ba? Is always part of progress. Anything that grows will experience some pain. If you avoid all pain, you are avoiding growth. Two, number three, often, kadalasan, the difference between where you are to where God is bringing you is simply the pain of unwillingness to do it. Sabihin, from where you are to where you are going, ang difference lang para mapunta ka sa gusto ng Lord is because you're very unwilling to endure the pain. Pralapanan mo You know, kaninang umaga, you know, kasi remember, I'm doing squat. 10 squat lang ako every day. Kakalimutan ko kanina, habang naliligo ako, 25 ako si si Kiara, 100. Ako 25 every hour. Nay, nabiro lang. Habang naliligo ako. You know, and when you do that, dati yung 5 lang, nahirapan ako eh. Yung 10, sanay na sanay na ako. Ngayon, 25. Siguro mamaya, 95. Next week, 105. No, biro lang. But when I'm, what I'm saying is, sometimes we are not willing. Alam mo, nung pumunta ako sa Palawan at mag stay sa Palawan, meron na akong unwillingness nun kasi niimbita na ako sa Amerika. 1986. 83 ako, 82 kami pumunta rito eh. A few years after, iniimbita ako sa Amerika. Okay, magpastor ako sa Palawan, sa Manila. Eh, mga barkada ko, nung kaibigan ko, mga lalaki na nung mga pastor, um, church nila kasi supported by the P American. Kami, wala kami American support. So, nag-pray ako. Pray ko, Lord, ano ba ang gusto mo? And madalas ako nag-pray, naka, naka, nakadapa, nakahubad, umiiyak ako kay Lord, lit-lit lang ng office ko. Ako, ano pa, hindi pa cementado lahat, may mga lupa-lupa. Pero every morning ko, nandun ako nakadapa. 
God, ano pong gusto mo sa buhay ko? Anong gusto mo? Lord, hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko, but please help me, guide me. Kaya kailangan ko nagbabasa ng Bible kasi I need to. Kinakailangan ko mag-aral because I need to. Because God's calling me to be a leader. Pero nagpipray ako ron, sabi ko, Lord, ano pa ang gusto mong gawin ko? Lord, pagkana ako sa Amerika, siyempre, lahat ng tao gusto Amerika. Di ba? Amboy, American boy. <laughs> Pangalawa, Lord, patan na lang kaya ako sa Manila kasi buhay pa mga magulang ko. Every year, I have to go home because Beneventura tradition yan. Pag Pasko, kahit sang ka, you have to go back and be there in the family in family table. Pero ang last option, magstay ako sa Palawan. Pero sabi ko, Lord, kung ako papipiliin mo, Lord, gusto ko pong bumunta sa Amerika. O kaya kung ayaw mo naman, dito nung ako sa Manila. Pero kung talagang ayaw mo, thy will be done. <laughs> Wala na ibang option. I remember one day I was there, I heard a voice, hindi audible. Sabi ng Lord, stay and win the islands. I stayed. Of course, ang dami kong mamimiss na option on my mind. dami ko mamimiss sa Amerika. Kasi mga kaibigan ko, grabe, tatlo kotse. Pero, hindi masaya. Yung kaibigan ko sa Manila, dati nalaki ng simbahan, ngayon wala ng simbahan. But, by the Christ of God, because I was willing, tinan niyo ako, and it's not about me po, I'm just telling stories para makarelate kayo. But if you are willing, miski pili mo unwilling ka. Kasi mahirap talaga eh. But if you are willing and say, God, I trust you, I have hope, and promises more are true. You know, when you do that, God will always come out for you victorious. Panalo ka lagi. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Number four. Always remember this. God is always faithful. Even when life is hard, even you think things are not working for your good, alam mo, Pain will teach you to depend on Him. Conflicts and problems, kakulangan, hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko. May problema ka sa anak mo, Lord. May problema yung anak sa magulang o sa pag-aaral o nawalan lang ng gana na. You just have to pray. Kasi pain will always and should always teach you to depend on Him. Number, number two on that part, hindi lang God is faithful and it's teaching you to depend on But number, a part of that, it is purifying your motives. Habang nasa problema ka, parang sa akin, kung ako gusto ko Amerika, gusto ko Manila, personal ko yun eh. I wanna, yan, may pagpunta ko, may dollar ako, no? dami kong ano, di ba? And, uh, you know, uh, kasi during that time, pag pupunta ako sa Amerika, almost every, nagpupunta ako sa Amerika, grabe yung, yung bahay ng mga kaibigan ko, laki, tsaka yung mga, mga gamit nila, ang lalaki. Sabi ko, pero Lord, hindi mo ako tinawag dito eh. Ay, 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 okay lang sa akin yun. Okay lang. But you know, it purifies my motive. Bakit ako naglilingkod? Ba't ako sumusunod? Ba't ako pastor? Bakit ako nangangalaga? Ba't ako nangal? Dahil gusto ko, big shot ako. Gusto ko, ako ang center of attention. No way! I would rather help somebody be a pastor, not me. Pero, God is always saying, anak, do you trust me? Yes, Lord, do this. <laughs> okay. I have to depend on God and it purifies my motive. Ano pang ginagawa ng when, when you say God is faithful? It keeps you humble and moves you to pray. It keeps you humble. Amen? So let me bring this to a close. Conflicts brings about the person, not the personality. Then I'm correcting it now. Pag may conflict, it's bringing out you to s- so that the world can see you. Ako, yeah, Christ in you. Kasi pag dumaan ka sa mga pagsubok ng boy, mellow ka, mellow, humble ka, eh. hindi ka brash, hindi ka rude. Kasi alam mo, Kaya mo narating ito, dami mong paghihirap na dinaanan. Tapos, ang Diyos nga siya, makapangiran, hinugasan yung paan ng mga apostol. So, it, you become like Christ. So, when God is blessing you, kasi God is saying, anak, I want to introduce you sa iyong mga kamag-anak. You know, may mga kamag-anak ako. Right now, my sister is watching in California. You know, my pinsan is watching in, in Georgia, Atlanta. 
my friend is watching in Long Beach, my friend is watching in Sacramento. May mga nonood sa atin from, from Italy, may nonood sa atin from Spain, from, from, from nagte-text sa akin, from UK, from the Middle East. Gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, when we put our trust in God, regardless of what happens sa buhay mo, you will always come out victorious. Hindi para makilala tayo. God forbid, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. It's not about Ancho. It's not about my person or my personality or my comfort. God knows I have surrendered that and I will continue to surrender God. To God to God. And kaya alala nyo yung baka, God spoke to me in my heart for the Lord eh. Lord, gusto ko mag-alay ng 50 baka. You know, because I think matutuha ang Lord if I do that, you know, out of my kulang. Ay, at that time, hindi ko alam saan kukuha ng pera pambili ng baka kaya bumili na ako ng isa, bigni apat, ngayon 12 na baka. Because Hindi ko kayang bumili ng 50 baka, pero unti-unti, may mga anak na yung baka. Baka. <laughs> pero din, sabi, sabi ng Lord sa akin, many months ago, nakwento ko na sa'yo, di ba? Parang very proud ako, you know, I will offer 50 cows to the Lord. And, and I'm boasting of the Lord, not, not Ancho. Kasi, that's a, that's a lot of money to offer ko kay God. But you know, one day, sa Lord sa akin, okay, the issue of pag-aalaga ng baka becomes my issue. Lord, dahil ako magbibigay sa'yo nito, kaya inaalagaan ko. Suddenly, it strike me. Inaalagaan mo? Kaya mo? Pero, pero paano kung nagkaroon ng pestilence? Lahat ng baka namatay. O di ikaw na bahala. Sabi ko, Lord, huwag naman. Kasi Lord, gusto kong mag pero Lord, the Lord spoke to me. Anak, kaninong baka yan? Una, kanino, saan galing ang boy mo sa'yo? Ba't ka nag-exist sa'yo? Ba't ka pastor sa'yo? Ikaw lahat ang may kagagawa nito, Lord. O kanino yung baka? Lord naman, huwag naman pag-usapan yung baka. But I finally have to say, Lord, the baka is yours. Kaya today, those cows, is not mine. In fact, even my house today, I'm saying to God, Lord, it's not mine, it's yours. Look at me, mga kapatid, and lahat kayo nakikinig. God is good. God loves us. In fact, there are five things I wrote here as your take home. Kanina may four na eh. Pero take home number, mabilisan lang. We are God's answer to the world's problem. You are. Pag nakilala ka nila dahil sa Christ na meron ka, ang nilalabas mo, Christ. Parang yung kanina, na persecute sila, umalis sila, dala nila yung faith nila. Ang kanilang binahagi, yung faith nila. Number two, you are being fought over. Nag-aaway ang demonyo para kunin ka. Pero ang Diyos, di ka pinababayaan. You choose, will you follow God or you will follow the devil? Parang sa Bible, si Lucifer, yung demonyo at saka si Michael, pinag-aaway yung katawan ni Moses. Remember, Moses died. They never saw the body of Moses. Pinag-aaway nung demonyo at ng anghel yung body. You know why? Because, sabi ng demonyo, murderer yan si, si Moses. I have to bring him. This body, he must suffer. Sabi ng angel, no, he trusted the Lord. I tell you, lahat tayo may pass. Pero God is saying, huwag ka maniwala sa demonyo, yung pass mo forgiven. The Lord is fighting for you. And you feel that. There is a struggle inside of you, internal and also outside. Satan is trying to get you. Kasi if I fall, everybody fall. Sabi ko nga sa pamilya ko, one time kumakain kami, I was so blessed. And they, they're listening to me right now. I'm so blessed kumakain kami. You know, binigyan ako ng friend ko ng 12-seater na table. It's not for me, binigyan lang ng friend ko sa Manila. I brought the yung silya ko sa Manila, sa bahay ko, Eight lang, bumili ako ng apat, 12-seater kasi. One day, I was eating. I'm very happy, masaya sila. So much food in the house. Sabi ko, God, praise God. You know, I, I gave them a good house. And, you know, and, and so much. Hindi lang family ko kasi I have adopted a lot of my mga anak-anak-anak. Marimang ibang tao pa doon. Then sabi ko sa'yo, alam mo, mapapait ng Lord. Ano? Sabi ko, you know, narealize ko, this is again very personal, but it's not about me. It's God speaking. 
Sabi ko, alam mo, ang bait ng Lord siya ang tatay natin. No, I, bilang tatay, I'm very thankful, sabi ko, that as a tatay, I'm providing this for you. And then I drop an idea that so that they appreciate God, hindi ako. But you know, if I die, if I die, all of what's connected to me, support and blessing, people giving me money, it's gone. And I don't know if whatever will happen sa inyo. But because I'm alive, and this is happening, we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate. Kasi sabi ko, I think we should honor mga tatay. I'm not looking for honor to myself at that time. Nakita ko yung katat- katatayan ng ating Diyos. I mean, He cares for us. He loves us. He provides. He protects. And I look at my life, sabi ko, God, hindi worth this si Andrew is. But now I am providing for my family. I give honor to my asawa, my anak, that their father is serving Jesus. Hindi ako lasinggero. Hindi ako walang ya. Hindi ako manunuba. Say, I gave them names. And then food on the table. Sabi ko, God, ang dami mga pamilya, hindi makain yung kinakain natin right now. Kasi nagbibiro nga ako. May meron, meron na kaming... I don't know at that time, pero madalas meron na kaming uh, watermelon, meron pang abogado, meron pang uh, uh, dragon fruit, sabay-sabay na kinakain. Sabi ko, oh my God, may ibang mga tao ang hindi makakain ito. But now we're celebrating. In the end, special Sunday, this is a normal kasi every Sunday, much of my family goes to my house and we eat. Mura eh. Dati kumakain kami sa labas, mahal ngayon, nakamura ako dahil sa COVID. Thank you, COVID. Ah. But there were tears in my eyes. Tapos sabi ko, you know, it's not about me, sabi ko sa family. It's about God. And I'm not asking you to honor me. I know you do. I want more. Ano na ito? Pero tila niyo ako, I want to talk to you right now. I'm closing. Ganyan si tatay. Mataas. He, he, might not, he might not be, your father might not be like yung tingin mo sa tatay sa langit because your father abused you. hit you. Abandoned you. But yung tatay natin sa langit will never, ever, ever, ever abandon. So I want to pray for you right now. Lahat ng mga nanonood, nakikinig, if you're, if you're your Life Church Network all over the world, I want you to know the best and safest and most powerful way to continue to just attract God's favor sa buhay mo. Protection from the enemy. overflowing abundance of God's supply is if you are willing and obedient. Obey God. Follow God. If you are tempted to iwanan ng asawa mo, kapatid mo, trabaho mo, o karangalan mo, don't! Stick to what is right. Kahasang araw, nagmamentor ako, may lumapit sa akin, sabi niya, Pastor, anong gagawin ko? Kasi ganito nangyari, ganito nangyari. Sabi ko, ang gagawin mo, just do what is right. Just do the right thing. And I believe God will always bless you because sabi ng Bible, righteousness exalts. Sin, compromise, awa-awa na hindi tama will always put you in. So look at me. I want to pray. I love you. God loves you. And if you walk, okay, Lord, humbly, depending on Him, moving into commitment and submission, God will never ever leave you. Let's pray. Takilang Diyos, maraming salamat. That sa mga pinagdadaanan namin, some of this, kagagawa namin kasi sa mga maling choices. But today is another day, new day ito, Lord. So we are putting our trust in you today. Lord, I pray sa lahat na nanonood at nakikinig. Lord, God, In the name of Jesus, make yourself so real sa puso nila. If you need prayer today, maybe you need the Holy Spirit to fill you. If you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If you need God to have breakthrough sa buhay mo on your finance. If you have need healing sa katawan mo for healing. If you, are, if you need relationship healing, I want you to lift up your hands. Lahat ng may pangalap, you lift up your hands. Taas yung kamay nyo. Takilang Diyos, lahat po ng iyong mga anak na today 
Unang-una, lahat ng may mga financial problems sa pangalan ni Jesus, Lord, open their mind to be generous, to put you first, and give them wisdom how they can be blessed financially. In fact, pinuputol ko ang lahat ng mga gawa, ng kasamaan, at lahat ng mga pagkakautang, lahat ng mga, mga maling mga pasya. Lord, I pray to all mga anak mo, and Lord, lambing lang, open the windows of heaven, and bring them success. Lord, sa lahat na may mga problema sa kanilang asawa, kapatid, kamag-anak, o pamilya, Lord, wag silang bumigay sa kaaway. Let them obey you, do what is right. And because of that, Lord, bring healing in that family relationship. Bring healing, Lord. And I pray, Lord, sa nangangailangan, Panginoon, ng, ng uh, kagalingan sa kanilang mga katawan. Lahat ng sakit, diabetes, heart problems, stomach problems, head problems, cancer, lahat ng skin problem, lahat ng problema sa dugo, sa balat, sa katawan. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I command you, sickness, leave that body right now. Lumayas ka ikaw na sakit na nagpapahirap sa pangalan ni Jesus at dahil sa latay ng krus na tanggap ni Kristo nang siya'y namatay, nang siya'y pinahirapan, yan ang aming kagalingan, Lord. And I pray right now, healing sa iyong katawan. Satan, get out of that body. Get out of that body. And I pray for healing. Lord, today, lahat ng mga anak mo, nang uhaw na uhaw sa iyo, Lord, Right now, I pray, Lord, mga kapatid, tumanda kayo, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, ang panalangin ko right now, puspusin mo. Lord, panalangin ko, puspusin mo. Right now, right now, Lord, puspusin mo ng banal na spirito ang iyong mga anak. Baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, receive the Holy Spirit, kapatid. Lip up your hands. Come on, give Give thanks to God. Open your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. La 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 to win souls and make disciples. Lord, I pray, mga kapatid ko, na umiiyak sa'yo, talagang gusto maglingkot, kumplituhan nila yung 12 nila. Lord, I pray, mga kapatid, they, they may be one soul, one soul lang, one soul, every time, give them opportunity so that they can win souls. And Lord, I pray. In fact, tinatalian ko ang lahat ng gawa ng kasalanan, I bind the strong man of depression, the strong man of uh, weakness, the strong man of wrong choices, I pray, O oh God, release your people with freedom and anointing by the power of those. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big love. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Come on. Come on. Let's sing. Come on. Indeed, I'm a child of God. Yes, sir. Let's give the Lord a big club offering. Come on. All right. Now, everybody, look at me. Kung kayo first time, we are now going to the stage ng ating service. This is our last act of worship, our giving time. It's giving time! All right. The Bible po, sinabi ng Bible that we honor God with the substance, with the blessings of our trabaho, our pinagkakakitaan. And when we give our tithes, 10% of our income, and we put an offering, dagdag po sa tithes, just to be generous. And then if you have made pledges a building or missions, do it. And if you have uh, uh, prayed to God for the first fruit, do it. Itong prayer ko po, because sabi ng Bible, give and we shall receive. Give because we honor God. Give because we want to support the house of God. Give because we want to win souls. So when you give today, I'm going to pray blessings. Lahat ng magbibigay, pwede taas po. Sa mga nandyan po sa inyong mga bahay, taas nyo ang inyong mga ibibigay. Iunat po ninyo. And I want to bless that right now. Come on, everybody. Lord, lahat ng mga handog ng iyong mga anak, lahat ng kanilang pinagpaguran na ngayon ay ino-offer nila, Panginoon. Lord, dahil dyan, Lord, buksan mo ang durungawan ng langit. 
and bless them with a blessing that they know nothing about. Masusurprise sila sa amazing thing na gagawin mo sa mga nagtitiwala sa iyo. And Lord, I pray sa pagbigay po namin ito, this is in respond to our love for you. Ito po yung aming in response because we want to support the work of God. Kaya Lord, tanggapin mo ang mga alay na ito at biyayaan mo ang aming buhay sa pangalan ni Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Come on, let's give our offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Baby, pinagpala. Come on, let's sing that song. Kasama natin ang Diyos Di ako mangangamba Di ako mababalisa Kasama natin ang Diyos Pari mo ba tayo tumayo lahat? Kasama natin ang Diyos Di ako malulungkot Di ako malulungkot Di ako matatakot Di ako matatakot Kasama natin ang Diyos One more time Kasama natin ang Diyos Di ako magangamba Di ako mapabalisa Kasama natin ang Diyos One more time Kasama natin ang Diyos Di ako malulungkot Di ako matatakot Kasama natin ang Diyos Kasama natin ang Diyos Di ako malulungkot Di ako matatakot Kasama natin ang Diyos Dumaan man ako sa inog Dumaan man ako sa ilog Di ako malulunod Dumaan man ako sa apoy Hindi ako masusunod Kasama natin ang Diyos Salamat kami sa kabutihan mo, sa mga salita mo na tanggap namin. Tutupo ang mga salita mo na nagbibigay sa amin ng liwanag, ng kasiglahan, ng direksyon, ng katuruan na magdadala sa amin sa isang tagumpay na buhay. Sa pag-uwi po namin sa pansamantala sa aming ama tahanan, dalangin namin ang iyong Santong Espiritu, Panginoon, na patuloy namin makasama upang patuloy na munimuniin, ipakita sa amin ang mga dapat namin gawin. Lord, sa alam mo, at alam mo, Panginoon, ang nakakabuti sa bawat isa sa amin. Pagpalaan mo ang bawat isa habang po kami umuwi, nakasama ka, at galak, dala namin ang galak at kabutihan mo sa lahat ng narinig namin at inunuro mo sa amin sa araw na ito. Pagpalaan mo ang bawat isa sa amin, hiniling po namin ang lahat ng ito sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, bago po tayo umuwi, uh, yung mga pong mga nakaubo po muna mo tayo, kasi po may instruct po sa atin yung mga ating mga ushers at uh, tuturo, ituturo po sa